In this problem a disc of mass m and radius r is given. So, this is the disc which has mass m and radius r and it is free to rotate about its vertical axis as shown in the figure. So, this disc can rotate about this vertical axis. A battery operated motor of negligible mass is fixed to this disc at a point on its circumference. So, somewhere here we have a motor and the mass of this motor is negligible and this is fixed to the periphery of the bigger disc. Another disc of same mass m and radius r by 2 is fixed to the motor's thin shaft. So, motor has a shaft and on this shaft we have another disc. This disc has same mass m, but the radius half that is r by 2. And this disc can rotate about this shaft that is the vertical axis and this rotation is also free. Initially both the discs are at rest. So, this is at rest and this is also at rest. This means omega is equals to 0, omega equals to 0. So, initially total angular momentum of this system is 0. The motor is switched on. Now, you switch on the motor so that this starts rotating so that the smaller disks rotate at uniform angular speed omega. So, this is rotating at angular speed omega and this is uniform. If the angular speed at which the larger disk rotates is omega by n, then what is the value of n? So, once this disk starts rotating, this disk also rotates and angular speed of this disk is omega by n then we have to find the value of n. So, let us try to solve this problem. So, let us first consider forces. We will use momentum, angular momentum conservation principle to solve this problem. But before that, let us see what are the forces that is acting. So, this is a vertical axis. So, this disc is fixed on this vertical axis. So, mass will pass through this point and mass for this will also pass through this point. So, mg will pass through the axis. So, this is one mg and this is another mg for the a smaller disc. Now, when we apply angular momentum conservation, we look the torque and if we want to apply angular momentum conservation in the vertical direction, I have to look there is no torque in the vertical direction. Let us see if I want to conserve angular momentum about this axis, this mg is passing through this axis. So, there is no torque. This mg will have a torque about this distance is r. So, mg times r this is a torque, but this torque is not in the vertical direction. This torque is basically about this axis. So, this torque is in the horizontal direction. So, even though m z is acting here about this axis which is creating a torque, this torque is not in the vertical direction, this is in the horizontal direction. So, I can say there is no forces that is acting in the vertical direction or, or, or more importantly I can say there is no torque that is acting in the vertical direction. So, angular momentum is conserved in the vertical direction. So, this means initial angular momentum is equal to final angular momentum. What is the initial angular momentum? Initially this was at rest, this was also at rest. So, initially both are not moving, both are not rotating. So, initial angular momentum is 0. Now, let us find final angular momentum. So, what we have done? So, this motor is now operated. So, this disc is rotating. Let us say this is rotating in this direction that is anti clockwise with angular speed omega. 
So, once this disc is a start rotating, this will also a start rotating because total angular momentum has to be 0. So, if this is rotating in anti-clockwise direction, this has to rotate in clockwise direction, then only total angular momentum will be 0. So, this is rotating in this direction and angular speed is given in the problem that is omega by n. Now, let us find final angular momentum. So, now at this time we have angular momentum due to larger disc and angular momentum due to a smaller disc because both discs are rotating. Now, let us find angular momentum of bigger disc and a smaller disc. Now, if you see the smaller disc is rotating about this vertical axis, but this is also rotating because this whole disc is rotating. So, this disc is also rotating. So, I can say center of mass is rotating in this circle and this disc is rotating about its center of mass. So, angular momentum of a smaller disc will have two component. One is angular momentum of center of mass plus angular momentum about the center of mass. Now, let us write these terms. First is the bigger disc, this disc. Now, what will be the angular momentum? If you remember i times omega, if something is rotating, it is a pure rotation. Angular momentum is i times omega and for disc i is m r square by 2 and omega is omega by n. And what is the direction? So, I have chosen this anti-clockwise direction is positive. This means vertical direction. If you have angular momentum in the vertical direction that is positive. In this case, this is clockwise. So, this angular momentum is negative. So, I have to put a negative sign here. Now, let us find angular momentum of a smaller disc. First, angular momentum about Cm. So, if you see this Cm is that is center of mass is moving in this circle and angular momentum of center of mass is m times v times r and v is what? Velocity of center of mass. So, how we will find? Now, this is omega by n rotating this disc is rotating by omega by n times r. So, linear speed of this point is omega by n times r that is v c m. So, m v, v is what? Omega by n into r and r this distance times r. Now, this is rotating in clockwise direction. So, once again I have to put a negative sign. Now, for this disc, this about the center of mass. So, this we have written for center of mass because this center of mass is rotating in this circle. So, we have completed this term. Now, about center of mass. So, about center of mass, this is moving in a circle, uh, this is rotating, this is a pure rotation. So, i times omega. i is how much? m r square by 2. So, this r is r by 2. So, m r square by 2 and this speed is omega. Now, this is anti-clockwise, so this will be positive. So, now we have calculated the final angular momentum. I know initial angular momentum and final angular momentum we can equate. So, if I equate these two angular momentum, that is initial angular momentum is equals to final angular momentum which is equals to 0, initial angular momentum was 0. So, this whole term is equals to 0. So, the first term is minus m r square by 2 omega by n this term is here and this term is here. Now, if I simplify this, I can write this is m r square omega by 2 n with a negative sign and this is m r square omega by n and this is m r square omega by 8. So, if I cancel m r square omega, m r square omega and m r square omega from this, I can rewrite this is minus 1 by 2 n minus 1 by n and this is plus 1 by 8 and this is equals to 0. 
So from here I can write n is equals to 12. So this is basically rotating at a very smaller speed. This means if this is 12 radian per second, then this is only 1 radian per second. So this problem illustrates how you can apply angular momentum conservation when the torque or you can say there is no torque in the vertical direction. I hope you like this video and if you like please share, subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.